Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in today's video, we're going to talk about what's new in Fusion for January of 2025. Now, when we do these videos, we don't cover everything because honestly, a lot of the little updates don't impact us on a day to day basis. So, we're going to focus on mainly the design updates, keeping in mind that auto, the auto constraint or the AI improved auto constraint and sketches is not available for everyone. I actually don't even have it available to me. So that's going to be in its own video when it is released to everyone. And in that video, we'll also talk about the update to fastener detection when you're using automated drawings. So that'll likely be a whole video unto itself. But for this video, we're going to focus on polygon constraint, mesh align, some updates to fasteners, uh, some updates to configurations, and we may mention a few other things here or there. So the first thing I want to talk about is the polygon constraint. This is something that was added and Honestly, on the surface, I don't think it's very beneficial, and I'll show you why. So if we're gonna create a polygon, most of the time you go to the polygon tool. This automatically creates a polygon constraint, which means that this shape is going to be fixed as a regular polygon, and then we can apply constraints like uh, vertical, horizontal, and we can lock this in place with dimensions. This is great, but the way that you would typically draw something like this manually is you would get relatively close and as soon as you're relatively close you would want to use something like the polygon constraint to lock it in place well unfortunately that's not how this tool works the only way this tool works is if you already have a perfectly created polygon and the only way to really do that or the only way to do it quickly uh, is to draw a line and then to use something like a circular pattern of that line and then what we would do from here is we would increase the number, we would trim back all the stuff we didn't need, and I'm going to go ahead and messed up there, but we'll just go ahead and get rid of some of this. And basically what this means is that you would have to go through the process to do this manually, and it doesn't make any sense when we already have a polygon tool. So I, again, I don't really see the benefit of that tool because it can't take a polygon sketch that's close and, and lock it in as a polygon. So if it's, if it's useful to anyone, it's probably if you accidentally delete the polygon constraint that comes with those polygons. The next thing I wanna talk about is gonna be mesh align. And don't get your hopes up because this unfortunately is not a true mesh align tool like you would think. If you're dealing with scan data, it's still best to align that scan data externally in something like Quick Surface, or if you're using an Einstar uh, scanner using their XScan software or going to GOM Inspect or something like that. But what this tool does is it allows us to align a triangle on our mesh, and if you have to zoom way in to see them, which is basically taking those three points of a triangle, and it'll allow us to snap it to a plane. Now, there are two ways that you can do this. One is to turn off history, so that way you have access to all the direct editing tools, or for a mesh body to go into direct edit. And once we're inside of the direct editing tools, we'll be able to find it on our modified panel. So once again, all this is allowing us to do is it's allowing us to essentially select a triangle on our mesh body and snap that to a plane. So I'm gonna go ahead and just zoom in here and if you've got a really heavy mesh, then this could be kind of time consuming. Keeping in mind that this mesh was from our Metro X scanner, and this has actually been remeshed to be quite a bit smaller. The Metro X does put a ton of points in there. And you can see that we're able to snap it to a plane. So if you are trying to do things like mesh section sketches, it can be helpful, but it's still not aligning to a coordinate system. So this is a circular part and I would really want to make sure that the center of this is at the origin if I was going to try to reverse engineer it. And I just don't have that ability with this tool. So I think it's nice that it's there. Unfortunately, it's not a mesh alignment tool like we would want to align it to a coordinate system. And now let's talk a little bit about the insert fastener tool. Uh, this is a tool that has mixed reviews. And honestly, personally, I still use insert from McMaster Car. Anytime that I'm using hardware on a project, it's likely something that I need to order. I don't just have it on hand. So I tend to go to an external vendor and use their part number and their, their 3D model resources. I think that there is definitely a benefit to using Insert Fastener. It's just a little ways off from, from being fully realized. All right, so the updates to this are in the form of an auto length update, and they've also changed it to require a part number. 
So what that looks like is if we are going in and I'm going to pick, let's say, a flanged hex head. I'll just pick this top one here. If we're going to go in and we're going to use this tool, we want to make sure that the nominal length is set to auto. Uh, this is not available for all hardware. I have found some cases like self-tapping screws where I don't have an auto length option. But what this allows us to do is it allows Fusion to identify not only the diameter, because the nominal size is set to auto, but also the length. And the length is going to be based on some of these options. So you can see here we've got auto length options for nut clearance as well as thread clearance. And you can play around with those settings. The other thing that is changed again is the part number. You will be required to have a part number in here. So as soon as I go down and I delete that last letter, it's going to auto populate again with whatever value Autodesk has saved for this hardware. So it is nice that it is required because it means that there's always going to be something there in the part number. But unfortunately, again, if it doesn't tie back to an external vendor or some sort of internal part numbering structure, it doesn't really have the same amount of functionality. So once we say, okay, what I would expect to happen is if I change the geometry, let's say to 25 millimeters, I would expect that bolt to update. Now, unfortunately it doesn't. And if you go to modify and you compute all, it doesn't change anything either. The way that you have to get it to update is to go back into edit fastener. If there's another way, I haven't found it yet. And hopefully as this tool evolves, it'll be able to automatically detect the geometry. This hole was made with the whole feature, so I'm giving it the best chance that it possibly has. So the tool does work. It does allow you to update. So if you're using the same hardware and you have the ability to go back and just edit this, that will allow it to update all the hardware for you. So the next thing that I do want to talk about is going to be configurations and we're not going to go deep into configurations but I do want to note that they have been updating the types of features that you can configure so for example whole feature now has the option to configure certain parameters that are non-geometry based but it is only going to show you those shape settings if they're currently in the model so what I mean by that is here we've got diameter tip angle counterbore depth and counterbore diameter uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this out. I'm going to edit this feature to include a thread. And now if I go back and configure that, you can see here now we've got some shape settings. We've got thread settings. So things like size, designation, class, direction. Uh, a lot of these aren't going to have a direct impact on the geometry because if you don't have modeled turned on for your threads, it's just going to be an appearance but they are still configurable. I, again, the downside here is that all of the options for holes aren't configurable. So it would be a little bit tricky for us to go between, let's say a threaded hole or a passing hole in this part, if that was something that you wanted to configure. It generally would mean that you would have two hole features, suppress one and not suppress the other. You can do things like toggle on and off the modeled thread option, but you, uh, you can't really toggle on and off threads in general. So again, that's a, that's a nice update, but that's something that uh, I think needs a little bit more development, a little bit more work, and then it'll uh, really open up the power of it. And again, I mentioned there are a lot of other updates. I'll put a link to the blog post in the description of this video. You can always go up to your question mark and go to what's new, and that'll take you right to the blog post as well. Like I said, there are some updates to drawings, things like uh, cropped view is a new view type that we have some automatic fastener detection for automated drawings and some other things that got sprinkled in there. And again, we're gonna come back to the AI stuff. So like the automated sketch constraints and the automated uh, or AI fastener detection. Once all that is released for all users and I have access to it, I'll do a video just on those tools. But if you have any questions on the stuff that you saw here or anything else that came up in what's new that maybe doesn't make sense, I'll do my best to answer those questions. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.